Cyberpunk games will become an epidemic. It's just going to happen. That's not to say that I'm not going to enjoy a lot of them, but when a genre gains noticeable popularity, it explodes. Just look at Battle Royale, for example. I would advocate the genre is basically dead already in terms of startup access, but there are hundreds of these games. Dozens have started, failed, rebranded, failed again, or just never even gained any sort of spotlight to begin with. Point is, the genre got noticed, it expanded rapidly, got oversaturated, and now if you aren't a major publisher with an obscene amount of money at your disposal, it's pretty hard to succeed in that landscape. Pretty much the same thing is going to happen to Cyberpunk, and we can already see the reskins and the clones getting started. Not too long ago, I referenced a new mobile game by NetEase called Code Theseus. This game is Cyberpunk themed, with direct trailer references to Cyberpunk 2077 from CD Projekt Red. There are scenes where the poses are the same, the lines on the face are exactly the same, entire elements right down to the actual logo and how it assembles at the end are similar, and the ending result is that you have a crappy little mobile game. I don't know if it's crappy, honestly. I just hate mobile games for the most part, but you have a crappy little mobile game which plays off of the hype and the attention for Cyberpunk 2077 instead of crafting its own unique value. Well, Code Theseus, or Code T as it's also referred to, it's not the only one. Tencent, another Chinese tech giant right alongside NetEase, is developing a new cyberpunk game called Code Sin. And Code Sin is an even worse ripoff of Cyberpunk 2077 than Code T. That is quite obviously being developed for maximum monetization in tandem with a popular title, rather than adding value to the space. Now, obviously, cyberpunk as a genre, in terms of futuristic dystopian technology and structure, it's not purely unique to the 2077 version being developed by CD Projekt Red. However, the genre really only gained mainstream popularity because of their efforts, and that mainstream popularity is not based on widespread interest for the entire universe. As an example, we can look at Star Wars, where that type of far-reaching interest is true. The general consumer attention seems to be oriented specifically around Cyberpunk 2077. Now, before anyone jumps at the chance to say, no, well, I've been interested in cyberpunk lore for years. Yes, of course there are those people that have been fans of the tabletop variants, the pen and paper role-playing version, and the general universal lore for a very long time. 100% yes, but the mainstream consumer appeal, that is, the buying power of a wider AAA gaming demographic, that was only captured once Cyberpunk 2077 took center stage and became a hype train unlike practically any other. So that brings us to Code Sin, because where there is hype, there are knockoffs, and Code Sin is just shameless. Using the Unreal Engine, it brags about things like hair and customization options, but the rudimentary armor, stamina, and shooting stats suggest anything other than actual depth. The models, the vehicles, the environment, it's all indicative of, in my opinion, a rushed cash grab with almost none of the elements and care that have driven such colossal interest in Cyberpunk 2077. All of this is made so much better by the way the narrator describes our immersive character and vehicle customization process with state-of-the-art real-time graphics. Setting aside the fact that almost every game ever uses real-time graphics and just saying state-of-the-art means nothing when you actually compare this to some of the other material out there in the industry, Code Sin really is just an objectively worse Cyberpunk 2077. But all this considered, while Cyberpunk 2077 may be the catalyst to a genre explosion, it is going to have key differences when compared to a similar movement such as Battle Royale. Boiling down the basic trend, we can see that wherever it legitimately began, some say a mod, others say it was a Japanese film or an American literature novel that kicked off the trend of battle royale interest, but the point is, wherever it began, battle royale started small and grew over time. Cyberpunk 2077 is basically the exact opposite. It will be similar in the sense of exploding interest, yes, but CD Projekt Red have now delayed the game multiple times polishing and fine-tuning, with a larger team than they have had for any other previous game, and they've had some very successful previous games, specifically The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. And the end result, we hope, and I'm sure they hope as well, will be a beacon of success in the entire industry. For Battle Royale, there was an audience, but nothing to capture their interest. Games would come out, but they were buggy, glitchy, messy, unfinished, you name it. Over time, the Battle Royale games got better. Eventually, you had something like Blackout, for example, and then subsequently Warzone, which have their faults, sure, but they are infinitely better than the glitchy, unplayable mess that the early survival mods often became. Basically, there was a reverse pyramid effect here, with each level growing and improving, thus gaining increased support. 
Now apply this logic to Cyberpunk and it looks completely different. There will still be a swell in player interest, absolutely, of course, but rather than a roaming group of enthusiastic players looking for a home, there will be a massive influx of gamers engaging with a product that has been years in the making, polished by one of the best teams in the entire world, that will serve as a better foundation to engage its customers than any of the early Battle Royale games ever could. The basic progression where something new, better, and more polished can come along to scoop up a section of the player base and proceed to grow from there with its own audience, that will definitely be much more difficult because the product needed to capture their interest will, largely speaking, there will always be some sort of fragment of an audience even for the worst titles imaginable, but generally, the product needed to engage them must be superior in some respect to what they already have. And when they already have Cyberpunk 2077 from CD Projekt Red, Code Sin is probably not going to be all that appealing. Now, what the game turns out to be matters a great deal because the potential is there for a multiplayer MMO-style cyberpunk game to fill some sort of void, at least temporarily, and I emphasize that word, temporarily, but the always online multiplayer component to this game, knowing the track record and propensity for Tencent to go all in on monetization and microtransactions specifically, it's going to be a hard sell. Not only that, but there are already identity issues for this product because if you listen early on in the first few seconds of the video, the narrator says a tech demo for a globally marketed PC and console open world FPS game. But then the entire rest of the demo shows off customization options and aesthetics of various kinds, which flies directly in the face of how gamers wish to operate when they choose different character cosmetics because in FPS games, you can't see your character. However, if you look at the perspectives they show, it's never once in first person, and the final frames quite clearly insinuate a third person gameplay perspective. In fact, they legitimately have a HUD pop-up, which shows weapon stats, a map objective, and various abilities. This completely contradicts their claim of an open world first person game, and for me, calls into question what this will actually be. If I had to guess, this is going to be a complete cash grab. Total, total trash, with no soul, no identity, and absolutely no value. And an emphasis on lazy skin cosmetics, microtransactions, and other monetization schemes to milk its player base dry as quickly as possible. The whole thing looks like just one of those scripted, pre-rendered mobile game ads, which end up being a completely different thing than the final product. This would honestly be a much smaller concern if the game remained confined to a domestic Tencent market, specifically China. The reason for this is not because that makes the concept of ripping off your customers okay, far from it, but because the concept of microtransactions has been normalized to a far greater degree in that particular market. I can hate a monetization method all I want, but if that's what is acceptable and normal in a particular region, that's fine. They get sold products that they are willing to buy and are okay with. Not my place really to be upset, but this game is pointedly advertised as marketed globally. Also, can we just take a minute and look at that minimap? Yeah, the minimap shows a wall directly in front of her, and it's actually a long curved street that hooks off to the left. They couldn't even be bothered to make a fake little transparent gray minimap like icon thing that matched up with the visible layout. It's not even animated. It's a flat 2D image. Like, is this for real or is this a troll? If I had to stake money on it, I'd place two to one odds that the game either does not come out at all or gets shifted last minute to a mobile version, and that the final result is a point and click third person on rails arcade shooter, something like that, or some sort of idle clicker city sim with like scripted little FPS fights to get money every 20 minutes. I could be wrong, it could legitimately be an open world FPS game, except why the third person fake gameplay section at the end then, but my doubts are pretty much at maximum that this will be anything other than a complete disaster. The market is there for cyberpunk concepts. There is a rather interesting Kickstarter I'm watching called Cyberpunk Nights, which looks kind of cool. There are some indie games that are about parkour, I think, and turn-based action in the cyberpunk universe. The potential is there for smaller dev teams to take some aspect of the cyberpunk lore and universe and create an innovative product that absolutely sells, well, relatively speaking, facilitated by the general rise in interest. But trying to execute a globally marketed clone, like what Code Sin appears to be doing, I cannot picture any chain of events where that becomes successful outside any other market than perhaps China. But even then, if they have any access at all to the actual Cyberpunk 2077 game and Code Sin is not a multiplayer MMO title, I don't see any angle for success here. 
To go further, despite the lack of market opportunity for lazy cash grabs, relatively speaking, the inverse of what we saw with Battle Royale, while still very closely mimicking its escalation of popularity, there will be more and more of these attempts to capitalize on the interest by churning out shallow, lazy reskins or genre clones of some kind. I'm not saying that no other studios should make cyberpunk games. I'm saying that there will be a pretty saturated market in terms of products that are unworthy, underdeveloped, and undeserving of your time and your money. But that's it. Code Sin has now joined Code T, and it's funny that they call them all Code something, as an example of, in my honest opinion, lazy development aimed at a cheap return, but honestly, who knows? For some, this might be exactly what they were waiting for. If you want to support, there are links down below, merch, Patreon, Twitter, other social media, another gaming YouTuber to support as well. Please check out his channel. But I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching, and have a nice night.